Here is another video on sliding window. In this video, we'll be using the sliding window technique to solve this lead code question, longest substring without repeating characters. In my previous video, I explained the sliding window technique, which is a common solution that is used when solving problems where you have to find a subarray in an array or a substring in an existing string. In the previous video, we looked at a subarray. In this case, we're looking at a substring. So the question here is given a string S, find the length of the longest substring without repeating characters. So if you have a string like this, you want to find the longest string that none of the characters is repeated so in the case of abc none of them are repeated in the case of abca a is repeated so this is one of the substrings this is another substring this is another substring this is another substring this is not another substring this is another substring this is another substring this is another substring and this is another substring so the longest length is three in the case of bbbb the longest length is one in the case of pwwkw the longest length is three which can either be this or this Okay, so how do we apply the sliding window technique to solve this problem? Well, like I explained in the previous video, the sliding window technique involves a window which grows and shrinks until you get to the end of your array or string. The window starts from something like this, and then this goes from here to here to here to here. At some point, this will also go from here to here. At some point, this will go from here to here. Then this might go to here. Then this gets to the end, and this would also get Get to the end so this is a faster technique of looping through an array from the beginning to the end so we're going to keep track of our max length which is zero and as our window goes from the beginning to the end we change this variable when we need to and we're going to return the max length now what we are going to do in the middle here is first we're going to loop through the array when we're looping through the array we'll have to keep track of the characters visited we can use maybe an object here or a map in this video i'll be using a map then we also keep track of the substrings without any repetitions then we'll also move the left side when something repeats and we'll keep moving the right side to the end of the array so we're going to have a loop and we'll be moving the right side of the window so here we're going to have a loop where the right side starts from here and it goes to here to here to here until it gets to the end so i can have a for loop for let right index equals zero right index should be less than the length of the string and then we increase the right index by one and then up here i'm going to have my left index to be zero so while the right index is moving i'll also be moving the left index when i need to and then like i said we have to keep track of the characters visited and i'm going to use a map so i can have my s map create my map object here with the map it's easier to store a character that i've visited with the position of that character and also get that position whenever i need it I'm going to get my current character on the right side of the window. So the current character is going to be S right index. I'm going to set the current character and the current position, which is current index. So for a string like this, for example, we have a map where the key is A and the value is zero, B, the value is one, C, the value is two. Now when we get to A again, the key is going to be A, but the position is now going to be three. When we get to B, the position of B is now going to be updated to four. So instead of B to be one, it's now going to hold a new position of four. So this way I can keep track of all my characters that I'm visiting as well as their last positions. When we have our current character, we have to check if that character has been visited before. So I'm going to have visited character position, which is going to be smap dot get current character so if the character has been visited before then it's going to have the position of 0 1 or 2 a certain index but if it hasn't been visited before it's going to be undefined so here i can check if the visited character position is not undefined then that means the character has been visited before and i'm going to move the left side of the window why am i moving the left side of the window if i've visited a character let me use this string here in a diagram so you can understand so we have this string here our window starts from here it goes here b hasn't been visited before it goes here c hasn't been visited before now when it gets to this side where a has been visited before now we have to move the left side of the window because in this case this is not a valid substring here this is a valid substring and we kept track of the length as three but at the point where it gets here this is no longer a valid substring so now i have to move the left side to a point where i can have a valid substring and how do 
I move the left side? Well, I'm going to look for A. A exists here. So now I'm going to move the left index to the position just after A. And now I'm going to have this valid substring. And when this also gets here, B has been visited before. This is the index of B. So I'm going to move this from here to the next side. And I do the same thing. If I get to C, I'm going to move C here. Now, if I get to B again, B has already been visited in this string. So I'm going to look for the index of B. This is where B is. And now I can move the left side of the window to the position that comes after B. Here, when we have visited the character before, I am now going to do left index will be equals to visited car position plus one. So just the position after that visited position. Here I add this to the map and then I can get my max length. So my max length starts from zero, but I can now update that variable to say max length is equals to mat.max. I pass the current max length and then I'm going to check right index minus left index plus one. This is going to give me the length of the substring. So let's say we had something like this. Now the index of B is four, zero, one, two, three, four, and the index of C is two. So four minus two is two, then plus one is three, which gives me the length of the substring. So this is how I'm finding the left of the substring and I'm going to compare it with the current max length so I can find which of these values is bigger. This is basically all I need. The solution is not 100% perfect and I'm going to explain why, but let's run this first. I'm going to zoom out to run the test cases. Current index is not defined. Sorry, this should not be current index. This should be right index. Okay, let's run this again. So the first case failed. I'm going to explain why this failed. Our string is A, B, C, A, B, C, B, B. Now at the point where we come to A, we have visited A before, right? And A has a position of zero. So in my if condition here, I'm saying if I visited this character before, that means it's not going to be undefined. Then I run this. But because the visited car position is zero and in JavaScript, zero is a falsy value. That is why this condition does not run. That is why our max length got to four because we didn't move the left index. So this place here gave us four. If we had moved the left index, the max length would not have gotten to four. So you have to be explicit instead of just saying if visited car position, you can check if visited car position is not equal to undefined because visited car position can be zero. So if it is not undefined, then we move the left index. And now I can run this again and all the test cases. And if I should submit this and we have one more wrong answer and I'm going to explain why this fails. So let's say this is the string that we have a b b a. So the right side of the window goes here. Nothing repeating. When it comes here, we find a repeating character. This is the index. So we'll move the left index just after the repeating character. So now we have this. But then when we come here, we have visited A before, right? We have visited A at the beginning. So now we have to move the left side of the window. So we move the left side of the window to the position after the previous occurrence. So now we have a substring of three characters. And this is wrong because B also is a repeating character. So what we have to ensure is that the left side of our window never goes back. The left side of our window only goes forward because if it goes backward, then it's going to get other repeating characters. If our visited car position is not undefined and the visited car position is greater than or equal to the left index, then I move the left index. So this way I'm ensuring that the left index never goes to the back because if I go to the back, I can capture other repeating characters that I have already skipped before. So this is accepted. And now when I submit, everything works fine now, 61 milliseconds. I still don't trust the time this takes because if I should press submit again, this can change. If I check the complexity, O of N. So here we've used the sliding window technique to solve a case of a substring in an existing string by moving the right side of the window and moving the left side when we find a repeating character until we get to the end. And then we keep track of every maximum length of substring without repeating characters that we find. I hope this video helps you to understand the sliding window technique even more. I'll solve more problems with the sliding window technique. So if you would like to see those videos and you haven't subscribed yet, please do like this video, share with others and see you in my next video.